Hi, and welcome to this immigration law update video. In today's video, I'm going to look at Article 3 and medical cases in the light of the recent Supreme Court decision in AM Zimbabwe, that's 2020 UK SC 17, and that was handed down on the 29th of April 2020. Now, I'm sure you're aware health cases in respect of Article 3 are very difficult to win and they're gut-wrenching cases looking at the most terrible circumstances often. And previously, we've been bound by the Supreme Court decision in N, which confined Article 3 health cases to deathbed cases. Now, in AM Zimbabwe, this was in the context of a deportation hearing. AM had some nasty criminal offences, but he also had HIV and he'd gone through two different antiretroviral treatments. And it was unlikely that he would get the necessary treatment if he went back to Zimbabwe. His case failed before the first tier tribunal and the upper tribunal. He'd argued it only on Article 8 grounds because he knew he'd fail on Article 3 grounds based on the end decision. By the time his case got to the Court of Appeal, we'd had the decision in Paposhvili and Belgium, which widened the scope of Article 3. So this was raised before the Court of Appeal. Now, the Court of Appeal dismissed the appeal because they also found they were bound by the decision in N. But they went on to look at the effect of Paposhvili and found that it only widened the scope of N in a very modest extent. So the case went up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court allowed the appeal, finding that they could now depart from N and that Paposhvili did indeed widen the scope of Article 8. So the test in Paposhvili, and it's from paragraph 183 of Paposhvili, was that there may be other very exceptional cases, that was from N in the United Kingdom in the European Court of Human Rights, uh, and one of these very exceptional cases is where there were substantial grounds for believing that the applicant, while not at imminent risk of dying, would face a real risk in the receiving country of being exposed either to a serious, rapid and irreversible decline in health resulting in intense suffering or to a significant reduction in life expectancy. They found that the Court of Appeals interpretation was overly restrictive in respect of Article 3. The Supreme Court went on to look at the procedural requirements and found that an applicant has to produce uh, sub evidence capable of demonstrating that there are substantial grounds for believing that their Article 3 rights would be violated. If they do that through proper evidence, then the burden shifts to the expelling state to dispel any doubts raised. And that uh, phrase, any doubts, means serious doubts. Now, don't get me wrong, the Supreme Court has still stressed that this is a demanding threshold. So whilst uh, AM Zimbabwe is very welcome news and does show that the scope of Article 3 is widened, it is still a demanding threshold. What about Article 8? Well, the case law still stands that Article 8 is not just an easier accessible version than Article 3. In terms of healthcare cases, you can't just raise Article 8 and establish a healthcare case on its own. You need other factors that engage Article 8 and then the health aspect will be a factor in the proportionality balance in exercise. So there may still be scope for arguing Article 8 but where you've got other factors that engage it. Also consider the scope of 276 ADE 1 Roman 6 in the immigration rules, the very significant obstacles to integration, because that may provide another avenue to argue health cases. So what's the takeaway? Well, the takeaway is that AM Zimbabwe is very good news. It shows that Article 3 has been extended beyond mere deathbed cases, but is still a demanding threshold. Article 8, well, you're not going to get home on just health alone. You need other factors that engage it. And there may be scope to argue 276 ADE. Those aspects weren't considered by the Supreme Court. That's my commentary. But AM Zimbabwe, very good news.